Good day, everyone. Good day, everyone. As we come together to celebrate this 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time, please join me in praying for Barbara Cream, Fred Bishop, Anthony Giambanco, Josephine Terramina, A. Norma Doolin, and Manuel F. Garcia. And so let us begin as we sing together, Gathered In.
make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
Jesus, again in reply, spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fatted cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out therefore into the main streets, and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets, and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we continue to hear Jesus teaching, in particular, the chief priests and elders of the peoples, using parables, those stories that reveal to us something about the kingdom of heaven that reveal to us a quality or a virtue or something about God and his relationship with his children. And once again, we find ourselves listening to Jesus as he speaks about a king preparing a feast for his son. And he invites, as a king would, probably the nobility and aristocrats and all those that were important in his kingdom, and yet some refuse the invitation. And yet the feast is ready, the banquet is prepared. And so the king commands his servants to go out to all the streets, to all the roads, to all the neighborhoods, to all the corners of his kingdom and invite all to the feast. Does that sound familiar? All of us, as disciples of Jesus, as part of God's family, the church, we have received an invitation to the feast whether at this moment in our lives, in person, on Sunday morning, or spiritually, in our homes, in either way, we have been invited to this feast, to this table, to this celebration. We have been invited by the Lord Jesus Himself. He is reminding us that all are welcome at this feast. It doesn't matter who you may be, who you may love. It doesn't matter if you're athletic or more into academics. It doesn't matter if your bank account is high or you're in debt. It doesn't matter if you're beautiful maybe not so attractive. All are welcome to this feast. But those that do accept the invitation of the Lord Jesus to come to his table, 
to partake, whether spiritually or in person, the gift of the Eucharist. It's not a matter of just coming to the feast. It's not just a matter of being fed. It's not just a matter of satisfying our hungry hearts. But that this feast, this celebration of the Lord's Eucharist, this banquet prepared by the Lord Himself changes us. This banquet of the Lord opens our eyes to the needs around us. This banquet of the Lord opens our hearts to realize our personal unworthiness. But this feast opens our hearts to receive the powerful cleansing grace that Jesus imparts to each and every one of us. It's not just a matter of accepting the invitation. It's not just a matter of showing up to this feast. But more importantly, to allow this celebration of both God's Word and God's sacrament of the altar, to allow this gift, this feast, this banquet, to transform our lives so that we become more like Jesus in our lives, that we begin to act like Jesus in our lives, that we begin to place our complete trust in Jesus each and every day. We come to the feast. Jesus feeds us and nourishes us. And then we are sent, literally sent from the church, literally sent from our couches at home, literally sent from our homes out into our world. To live the gospel that has been entrusted to us. To share God's love and His mercy with a world that is in so much need of that witness of God's love and mercy. And to always go to rebuild the church not just the physical stones that may be of a church building, but to go and rebuild the church, reminding each and every member of God's family not only our particular responsibilities, but to show others by our love that we are truly disciples of the Lord. Yes, we have been invited. Yes, we have gratefully accepted this invitation to be at this banquet. Now let us allow the Lord to change our hearts and our minds so that we can change our world, so that it may reflect God's justice that all people are God's children, no matter race, creed, or sex. To allow the Lord to transform our hearts so that we may truly be that light so needed in the darkness. Yes, come to the feast. The table is ready. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God in God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for the grace to be always worthy of the Lord's invitation to this holy table as we now pray. We pray for the church. May its prophetic voice proclaim to all the challenge to break the hopeless cycles of poverty, ignorance, prejudice, and despair which degrade the sacred dignity of human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for world leaders. May they work to end the violence perpetrated by verbal attacks deadly weapons, and cold indifference. May our nation and countries around the world become true havens of peace. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all in our country. May we show consideration and care for ourselves and for others, and abide strictly by the guidelines which our leaders and healthcare professionals recommend to defeat the very contagious COVID-19 virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all the women and men who work to protect and to proclaim the dignity of human life. May our faith inspire all of us to work for justice for the elderly, the terminally ill, the handicapped, and the most vulnerable in our world. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our deceased family members and friends, benefactors, and especially Barbara Cream, Fred Bishop, Anthony Giambacco, Josephine Tiramina, A. Norma Duman, and Manuel F. Garcia. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the Catholic community of Gloucester and Rockport. May the Holy Spirit inspire us to live the gospel, share God's love, and rebuild His church. We pray to the Lord. And we bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and those intentions entrusted to us and placed in our prayer basket before this halt. Let us entrust these prayers into the hands of our Blessed Mother, ever immaculate, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we make this prayer and all prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. The mystery of Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray. 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Our Lady of Good Voyage, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Anne and St. Joachim, St. Francis and St. Clare, St. Anthony, and all the saints who will please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty God, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please pray for our confirmation candidates. They began a virtual and home-based program last week, and this week they will be having their retreat, which is required by Cardinal Sean for all confirmation candidates. And this year, once again, the New Spirit Ministries from Springfield Mass will be leading and hosting that retreat virtually for our 54 candidates. So please, this week, say an extra prayer for these young men and women who desire in their hearts to follow the Lord Jesus. And we pray that their parents and their sponsors may witness to their faith by how they live and act with their children. So again, please pray for our confirmation candidates. The Lord be with you. 